Hello everyone, thank you for joining us for another one of our recordings. Zenzele and I aim to focus on people in the South African or African market who work in the field of smart technology, that is artificial intelligence and machine learning and edge and cloud and, and all those names. We often say don't just look at Silicon Valley, there are people doing amazing work locally and it's a wonderful privilege to feature these people and Zenzele, I will welcome you and hand it over to you to introduce our guest, please. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Johan. Uh, it's good to be back uh, in these uh, recordings. Uh, today, our guest is uh, Ori Tiretsi, uh, Ori uh, Bolivaro. Um, he is the Regional Sales Engineering Manager at uh, Infobi. And um, his role entails supporting the growth, strategic management, technical excellence, leadership, and internal quality of service of the sales engineering department at InfoBIP. And InfoBIP helps organizations to grow con conversions, boost revenue, drive efficiencies with an omni-channel retail strategy. Um, Oritiretsi, it's a pleasure to host you today. Uh, welcome to our conversations. Thanks for, thanks for having me here, Zenzele. Really an honor. It's a pleasure, pleasure. Welcome. Um, to kickstart, um, Ori, um, if you can tell us a little bit more about, uh, about yourself and, mm -hmm. um, and of course, um, the role that you play at, at InfoBeep and the solutions that you provide there, um, you know, what I'm thinking of is omnichannel uh, as, 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 as something that you guys provide with an emphasis on customer experience, etc. Maybe if you can uh, tell us more uh, and uh, give us a little bit of introduction there. Okay, sure. I mean, just, just give you a background with, uh, from an academic perspective. I studied computer systems uh, engineering. So I've always been a love of technology, even up, growing up as a kid, playing around with computers and so forth. So it's always been my passion. Uh, then once I was done with my studies, um, I was lucky enough to get into the ICT space, specifically uh, your <clears throat> you know, technology vendors like your Huawei's and Nokia's of the world who actually provide uh, telco infrastructure. So that's where I actually got my first exposure to customer experience and, and service management. And then at some point, I joined another company called uh, uh, Tioco where they mainly specialized in uh, service assurance software. Again, it's, it's looking at uh, MNOs or communication uh, service providers and seeing how to best monitor their network and get a service view instead of a network view of how they um, you know, uh, manage their network. And then finally, I ended up working with uh, InfoBIP. Uh, of course, InfoBIP, like you said, it's omni-channel, but omni-channel is just you know, the, the one component of how to optimize uh, customer experience. Uh, we don't just do omni-channel and provide the channels, but it's more the how to best optimize each channel and leverage the best out of it. And it's not just about, you know, sending a message to someone. It's also about when is the best time to send the message and is it the right time to send it? Um, and is this the preferred channel of that specific user? And what are the entry points as well? So it's, it's quite a holistic uh, approach in how you best, you know, engage with with your customer as a business. I love what you say, Ori. So I think connectivity in Africa and South Africa is something I'd love for us to speak about. Also mm -hmm. how this technology, um, I think there's this business angle, but also a societal angle. If we think of healthcare and education, if we think of our children. But we, before mm -hmm. we get to that, I, I love what you've just said, because I mean, we all are victims of cold calling of contact centers. 
Yeah. And most of the time, it is either irrelevant or they contact you at 7 p.m. for a gym contract. And I'm thinking, I'm definitely not interested in the gym right now. I'm drinking wine. Yeah. <laughs> so I'd love to hear, but before we get to the side of things, um, is, is, cause I assume mm. based on behavioral data, you can determine when is the best time to contact a person and, and on which channel. Love to hear a bit more about how that works, if you can give us some insights into that. Sure. I mean, I, I like to use the banking uh, example because it's the most practical, right? So there's different kinds of correspondence you can send to someone or message, right? If, if you are you know, doing a, a transaction, of course, it makes sense for you to receive the message immediately because that affects your money. So that, that kind of traffic or that kind of message is quite critical. But then you getting information about a specific product might not be you know, as critical or as important as receiving it right away if, if a business wants to send it to you. So that's how we prioritize traffic. We look at is this transactional traffic, promotional traffic, and that's how we, we come up with the mechanisms of how to best uh, you know, execute that specific um, use case. But what, what I can say is the biggest challenge that organizations have, as much as they can categorize these type of um, messages, they work in silos, right? Mm -hmm. So you have, you have one department sending marketing content, you have the other that actually talks about uh, a user specific account or information, and they're using different service providers. And what happens is, you end up getting four or five messages from the same organization, but different departments because they don't um, sort of work hand in hand together to come up with the best customer experience, uh, you know, approach for, for that specific, um, you know, uh, client. So that's, that's, that's basically how we do it. We look at what kind of traffic are we sending? And we also look at um, once that is done, what already has been sent to the user and how can we best, maybe delay something and send it at a time that works best as well. So the onboarding also plays a very important role because when you're being onboarded as a client, these are the kind of questions that the business should be asking. Uh, what is your preferred channel? Uh, what kind of content would you like us to send you, right? So once you have that information, it's very easy to sort of uh, come up with a strategy of how to you know, send certain information to that specific uh, customer and make it as bespoke as possible. Hence the term hyper-personalization. Mm -hmm. I, I like uh, that hyper personalization sounds like personalization on, a, on another level on the next level yes yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah I think, I think it's very important uh, when you look at uh, you know the, the space that we're in uh, in the digital edge I think uh, to, to have those personalized uh, services is very important now in, in, in the past a few years we have seen the, the, the tremendous growth within the uh, digital space and the, the, the digital transformation uh, or the adoption of these emerging technologies uh, and so mm -hmm. on. Um, you know, maybe maybe from your from your experience, um, how how has been the the, the response uh, you know from the market? Uh, you know, Johan likes to talk about the, the, the importance of uh, cultural change within an organization in order for, for technology to be able to, to permeate, you know, across different functions of the organization. Now, from your, your experience and uh, InfoPip side of things, how has uh, been the, the uptake and how are you finding the, the market uh, in, the, in the, the African, uh, you know, uh, space, I would say? Okay, so let me let me give you perspective. You know, just let's yeah. say before the pandemic happened, uh, let's yeah. reverse maybe two three years back. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you remember there was a big wave talking about big data analytics. Everybody was trying to build a data lake, and yeah. you know, yeah. trying to use data science to leverage off uh, the information that they received to get certain insights, right? So, what that did, um, based on my experience, is there, there was a lot of concerns people. Uh, being concerned about losing their jobs on how big data, big data is just going to fix all the problems. And a lot of organizations forgot about the building blocks of how do we get to big data? How do we harness off these you know, wonderful technologies that can really give us insights? Uh, but then fast forward to the pandemic, I think a lot of organizations realize that, um, you know, adoption also requires that uh, you are aligned with the employees that will be affected by the technology you want to incorporate, 
right? So it could be you're automating a certain process um, that could have been typically done by a human being, but that human being can be used for other services that are really good at leveraging of machine learning or artificial intelligence. So that's what we've been seeing uh, in the past couple of, uh, of years in terms of adoption. And what, what we find very useful is um, we're picking up a trend where you know, organizations are starting to understand that depending on what stage we are at in digital transformation, our approach could be diff different from our competitors, right? If you don't have legacy, legacy um, you know, information systems affecting the digital transformation, then it's very easy for you to adopt the latest and the greatest without incorporating legacy technology. But then we have ones that actually have legacy te uh, technology and infrastructure, which we could still use to optimize uh, you know, how we execute digital transformation for them, right? So it, it all depends. And normally phase one in that instance where uh, you know, they, they don't have much from a technology perspective, uh, we would actually look at what are the quick wins? What can you automate that will make life easier for either yours, your, your company internally or your customers externally? Um, could they consume your product over the internet? And what are the demographics? What is the age group of the people who are consuming your product? Are they quite proficient at WhatsApp? If yes, why can't they apply for a loan over WhatsApp? Um, you know, follow certain processes to, to allow them to you know, upload their information without traditionally walking into a brick and mortar environment. And then maybe we could build a chatbot that could ask them preliminary questions. And then what you could then do is once you get that data, um, you could have someone from your call center environment to actually post process the data. That would be phase one. Phase two could be, uh, why can't the person from the contact center be taken out of the you know, equation and have your system integrate with WhatsApp, get that information, and then have the person from the call center environment just make sure that the information that is collected, you know, is accurate, right? So that's how we do it phase by phase. And then maybe the next step would then be, what is the most frequently used use cases that that chatbot is not addressing that can be used to optimize? So it's a closed loop where you're looking at the problem, you're solving it, uh, and then you're analyzing the data again, what else is missing? So it becomes an end-to-end -end ecosystem where you keep, uh, making changes to optimize the existing use case. Mm. So many things you said that just rings so true, Ori. Maybe on the back of that, when you deal with customers, especially leaders, executives, and so forth, mm -hmm. what is the biggest challenges you face? Is it lack of understanding this technology? Is it seeing it as a silver bullet? Is it data not being in place? What are the commonalities, do you think? The, the, the number one uh, commonality is, um, do, do they have the right kind of data? Is their data structured in a way that you could utilize it, right? Uh, and then the second one becomes the working in silos. They have the same data distributed across the whole uh, you know, organization in different databases, but they don't have a single point of truth, which is why even in, in our product sets, we've set up a platform called a CDP, which is a customer data platform, right? which means it allows um, you know, organizations to then look at the different uh, touch points or the different information they have of a specific uh, customer and then ingest all that data in a way that it enriches the insights and information that they get. So data that you'll get from a CRM is different from data that you'll get from a policy system and other systems that have information about the customer. Once you have that holistic overview, then it's much easier you know, to, to segment them uh, as well, and seeing how you can cross-sell, upsell, and those other uh, scenarios that, that come with having that enrichment of data. Very interesting stuff. Um, Ori, maybe, maybe my last question, uh, I think it's, yeah. it's very related to what you just said now, uh, you know, about uh, the, the data quality, and I think you spoke about customer data platform that, that, that you provide. Um, I'm just thinking about the the, the small and medium-sized um, organizations, I think you, I think they will be very, or they are very pivotal when it comes to, to economy, creating jobs, etc. Um, mm -hmm. You know, but often we, 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 we find that uh, these small enterprises may, of course, challenges when it comes to 
uh, maybe let's say budget issues to to be able to have these digital tools in place and and maybe data how do they put together all the, the, the ingredients to be able to implement these technologies maybe maybe mm-hmm. from your from your side how how do you see um you know smes fully participating in in this digital economy so when it comes to that segment of the market what we are trying to do from infobib on our end uh, we we try to look at what we call uh, is, is 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 a platforms department, where we look at what kind of tools that are quite affordable for that market, that are being used uh, by the masses, and what we try to do for them is we try to natively integrate into those into those tools, where we have partnerships with these different CRMs and service providers that are specifically set up for those markets, and we ensure that they natively integrate with our platform which allows them to not worry about costs that are you know, related to integration, um, costs that might be related to them having additional charges to achieve the desired results um, if they're to use whatever tools they have versus us. So we try to make it as easy as possible, but more importantly, um, our model is set up in such that whether you have something or you don't, you can still get the best out of our solution. In other words, you don't technically need a prerequisite um, to, to use our platform. If you do not have a CRM, you do not have a CDP, we can do that for you. You can still achieve certain use cases starting from ground zero versus having to have certain tick, you know, things that we have to tick uh, for you to comply to do business with us. This is why we actually uh, segment our customers. We have what we call A segment, B segment. Those, those are your uh, you know, high, higher tiered uh, businesses. Then you have SMB, like you rightfully said, small, medium businesses. Uh, and we even you know, try to create scenarios where they could do some form of self-service. You, you don't sometimes need a dedicated account manager you know, as a small, medium business. Maybe you just wanna you know, go quick and dirty where your, your resources are quite limited and you just need you know, a way to, how do I just send a message to customer X through self-service, right? So we also direct them to self-service to allow them to be able to still achieve their desired results without having a, you know, a cumbersome account manager or process um, given the size of the, the business. Sorry, I, uh, look, I think you're touching on so many important points for businesses. Mm. I like that, that your organization looks after the, the big boys in the market, but the smaller ones, if they don't have a CRM or they don't have what they think they need, you can still assist them. Um, I think the way we interact with customers in this digital era is important getting it right. You know, so it's exciting to hear what you guys are doing. I'll, I'll look at your, your link. I'll put it in the video, uh, Ari, when we uh, edit it. And yeah, I just want to say, keep up the good work, spread the message. We can do this in South Africa. We, we yeah. do have the know-how and the talent and the skills to do exceptional things. So uh, thank you so much, uh, Ori, uh, for your time and mm-hmm. uh, chatting with us. And um, yeah, we, we really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks. I, I really appreciate, you know, uh, to be given this platform. You know, it's, it's a constant reminder that, you know, uh, what we're doing is, 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 is being seen by the relevant, uh, you know, peers in the market. So I really appreciate the, the feedback and the opportunity to be, you know, interviewed in this platform. Awesome. Awesome.